Hackers, beware. Your jobs are not safe from the robots either. There's a hacking challenge at DEF CON this week that's completely automated. Joining us to talk about it is Russell Brandom from The Verge. Welcome, Russell. Thanks for having me. So tell us about this competition. So yeah, it's one of DARPA's grand challenges. This was, uh, you know, in the 90s, how they kicked off self-driving cars. They had a self-driving car challenge where they said, you know, drive this far with no one in the car, just a computer in the car, and we'll give you, you know, a million dollars. Uh, and so they've had a couple of them. They're generally uh, successful in sort of kickstarting research into a, a thing that we thought wasn't possible. No one thought you could build a self-driving car, and now all the people that did that challenge are working for, you know, Google or, or Uber or whoever. Uh, so this one is, can we make, you know, it, the security world is sort of built around finding vulnerabilities in software. Is there something, some sort of string of characters we can give to Google Chrome that'll make it freak out and, and run any sort of string of software that we want? Um, and so the question is, could we get a computer program to look for those vulnerabilities. And we've never really been able to do that. DARPA has put up some challenge money. The grand prize is $2 million. I believe there's $4 million of total prize money. And we've got seven finalists, and they've actually put together this sort of a new kind of file binary. This is completely new software because they didn't want anyone to have a, a sort of head start. Uh, and coded a lot of software, and all of the programs are going to go look for vulnerabilities in it and write exploits and also patch their own software to keep it from being attacked by the other teams and sort of whoever comes out ahead gets $2 million. So what you're essentially saying is that they're creating software that's going to defend itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How does that not sound like the beginning of a sci-fi movie? That's everything <laughs> well, it sounds like the wrong. beginning, but I mean, the thing to remember about these challenges, we saw last year they had a big one of they, they wanted to build a, a robot that could walk around and open doors and things. And you saw the videos, if you're on the internet, in last June, there was a bunch of robots sort of getting out of the car and immediately just falling over. Uh, and I think that's, you know, yeah, there you go. Oh, exactly. poor guy. Um, well, and, and the thing is, the nature of the grand challenge is they say, okay, like, here's the day. You have this much time to do it. They don't wait until there's a finished product. And they also don't tell you everything that they're going to ask the robot to do. So all of a sudden they said, oh, well, you know, this guy was great at walking on concrete, but he's terrible at walking on sand. And then he just <laughs> heals over. I mean, that's, you know, in their defense, that's what happens when you're trying to do something that you didn't think was possible. But it also means... I think we've got a little bit of time before these, before all of our software works this way, right? We've got a good 20 years before this is how the security industry works. It makes me wonder how long before robots are actually writing the code from the very beginning, before it ever gets to this bugging, yeah. debugging, hacking, dehacking stage. When Absolutely. And I mean, you know, writing the code is the easy part. You know, I think Google I will so. tell you, you know, it's easy to it's easy to sort of write the first version of Chrome, but then you find out all the problems, you have to patch the problems, but you still want it to have you still want it to work the way it worked before. You know, that's really the hard part. And so if we can have computers do some of that, even if they couldn't get all the bugs, they could just get the simple bugs, it would be a lot easier for for sort of the the software developers of the world. Yeah. But what they're talking about is like software that can create its own exploits. So, I mean, at that yeah, point, we probably absolutely. need that big red button that I think you've written about this too. <laughs> like the, the, you know, the, the way yeah. to stop it. Is, is that gonna be part of this at all? No, there's no <laughs> big red button. They're just out in the wild. They're doing what they want. They're completely at the mercy. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, security research it's not just writing code. It's not like they're not code monkeys. They're like, actually, there's a lot of creative thinking um, involved in it. Yeah. I and mean, how, how does the AI deal with all of that? Well, that's what we're sort of going to find out. I mean, one of the things the one of the researchers told me was, you know, if, if you want a self-driving car, you just put a camera on it and you tell it what a pothole looks like. And you say, OK, that when you see that, that's a pothole, you know, don't drive over it. Uh, but finding a way that a computer program might break is a lot harder and sort of requires a lot more critical thinking and sort of creativity. 
Uh, and, and that's not something AI is very good at right now. We're pretty good at sort of recognizing images and recognizing patterns, but the idea of, okay, here's this, you know, I made this video player. What are some bad ways someone might use it? I don't know. I mean, w my guess is that we're not going to see anything. I think if they can do it at all, it will be really, really impressive because right now no one thinks this is even possible. That's sort of the level we're playing. So it's uh, just to be clear, they're not going to be actual robots. It's just going to be AI, um, but you can watch it. It's all soft. Yeah, but you can watch like they're they're live streaming this from the it's the cybergrandchallenge.com. I mean, what would people be watching yeah. when Thursday night? It's a lot of stressed out people in front of computers. <laughs> and I think they have some visualization, but they also have they gave them really great hardware to work this on because, you know, the machine learning algorithms often take a lot of processor power. Any of these things, you know, the code is rough enough that it hasn't really been optimized. So they have really cool, fancy sort of supercomputers to run this on. And you're just going to be seeing seven teams of very stressed out engineers sort of looking over their shoulder at each other. Like looking Exciting at, TV. Yeah, who's taking my job? Exactly. But, you know, you kind of don't want it to work in some ways. I'm sure that will happen in plenty, it not working. Yeah. So. so did you talk to some of the finalists? Yeah. I mean, this is, so they've gone through these qualifying rounds where they sort of made sure that their software could, you know, they gave them a, a piece of, they gave them a, a, something to find bugs in and they found bugs in it and they patched the bugs. So they know they can sort of do that. But the interesting thing is now there, some other team is going to be looking at the patch they deployed and say, oh, okay, can I fix this? You know, can, can I find another exploit in the new software that this, you know, program has written? And maybe, you know, they found some software that works great under most conditions, but there's this one way that you can attack it. And it becomes almost like sports where, you know, the one team is looking for the weaknesses of the other team. And, okay, how should we optimize our strategy to sort of get at their weaknesses? And so there's a really dynamic element that we're going to see on Thursday that we've kind of never seen before. And it's all going to be happening so fast because they're all running on these supercomputers and there's no human intervention allowed. You know, they just sort of set it and go that it's just, it's going to be very, very unpredictable. <laughs> well, you can uh, watch that at the cybergrandchallenge.com on Thursday. And if you want to read more about this, you can read Russell's article. And you also uh, wrote about the Telegram story that we talked about before. So if anyone yes. wants some clarification on that, you can check that out at The Verge. And Russell is Russell Brandom on Twitter. Thanks so much for joining us. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Russell. Take care.